Hey folks, so today we are going to be taking a look at Pop OS. It's an Ubuntu-based distribution that comes from the folks at System76. However, it's not just designed to go on System76 laptops, it's designed to go on quite a wide variety of hardware. In fact, it's based on Ubuntu, so it should have the same level of hardware support that Ubuntu does. It comes with the GNOME desktop, and it seems to be being released every six months. Uh, although it is quite a new distribution, and these things often uh, tend to change, but it does seem that they're sticking with a six monthly release schedule. Uh, this is a long term support release and it does have quite an interesting installation procedure, which is why I thought uh, I might walk us through the process in today's video. I've done reviews on Pop OS before. Uh, I think it was 1710 was the last Pop OS review that I did on this channel, and it was a pretty glowing review and it's. Um, it would be pretty much the same this time around. I've been playing around with it on the Triton laptop, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty good um, uh, implementation of the GNOME desktop environment. It's quite a slimmed down distribution. The idea is that it gives you the basic essentials. It's sort of a bit like an Ubuntu uh, minimal install in that regard, uh, and then it has a really user-friendly app store to put apps on, on top of the distribution there. So it seems that uh, System76 want to uh, develop a specific vision, a specifically sort of a specific UI for their end users, uh, which makes a lot of sense because, of course, Ubuntu and Canonical they tend to make reasonably rash decisions from time to time. Uh, it's not very often that a big distribution like Ubuntu will change from one desktop environment to another and then to another. So um, you know, if if you were basing your business on selling Linux machines um, and you wanted to make sure that you had a consistent at least a consistent UI to uh, to send to the consumer it might be worth putting something together yourself especially if you were particularly capable for it because what happens if Canonical do something completely off the wall with um, with Ubuntu and then maybe one day Pop OS could look to another distribution uh, to, to base itself on, but still provide the same UI, the same level of consistency to the end user. And especially if they, um, if their end user is perhaps not interested in technology in the same way that we are, it does make a lot of sense. Also, of course, there are, uh, they get to put their branding uh, front and center as well in an operating system. Although actually, truth be told, I haven't seen much in the way of, um, I don't think I've seen any System76 branding in this uh, operating system, so uh, so that's actually a pretty uh, pretty good sign. Um, so without further ado, let's crack on. But I'll talk a little bit about the distribution, of course, as we go through. Um, now, one of the things that is interesting about the process when you go to the website and you download the ISO is that it gives you a choice of two ISOs based on your graphics card. And I don't think I've seen any other distributions do it this way before, but it makes a lot of sense. I think most end users know whether or not they have a NVIDIA card or not, because those are the two images that you get. You get a, a, um, a, a, a NVIDIA ISO that you download if you've got a NVIDIA card, and then you've got a AMD or Intel ISO that you download uh, if you are uh, running one of those cards. And that seems to have taken all of the pain out of sorting out your uh, your graphics drivers um, because Ubuntu has historically not been super user friendly in that regard, especially if you've got a, um, a high end NVIDIA card. But it, it, things seem to be getting pretty good in that regard. But with a distribution like this, System76 get the uh, the final say, which is quite good. So. So I really liked how they did that. There also are quite a few other changes, and it seems that the process overall is designed to be maybe a little bit more user-friendly. Um, but uh, but uh, yeah, let's crack on. So let's do, uh, oops, did I click on the wrong one there? No, okay, and we're looking for, yeah, there we go. English UK, yeah, go on. Okay, yeah. Okay, excellent. So you can try demo mode, which is basically trying the live CD, or you can uh, you can back out. So let's install Pop OS today, and it will select a drive. Now it's quite a, it's, the idea is that you just basically dedicate a hard disk drive to it, or you can use customized partitions. Customized partitions is quite interesting because if you click modify, it opens up Gedit, Gparted rather. Uh, <laughs> why would it open up Gedit? Uh, and I don't know how many distributions actually do that. Um, but go straight to gedit, because gedit, I actually quite prefer to use gedit over uh, any other installer's partitioning uh, software. It just, you know, g, uh, uh, g parted, 
seems to be just a bit more, uh, you know, uh, feature rich, I guess. So anyway, let's select our uh, VirtualBox hard drive uh, and we'll erase and install. So drive encryption. Now this is one of the things that I actually liked about uh, Pop! OS as well, is the drive encryption and how it explains it. So it tells you about some of the ins and outs of drive, drive encryption. I did put drive encryption on when I installed it on the Triton laptop and I had zero issues with it whatsoever. It didn't seem to increase um, CPU usage or anything like that. The fans weren't spinning up more than usual. So it does seem that drive encryption is working pretty pretty well. Now I'm going to say don't encrypt now because I am in a virtual machine and I've n not done that before. I would imagine it's fine but just for the sake of getting this video out in one take I would quite enjoy uh, not having to deal with that extra faff but I can I can say from my experiences on the Triton that it seems pretty fine. So that is the uh, this is all the stuff unlocking which is pretty good. So um, also, one of the things, it, it, it does have a distinctive aesthetic. Uh, so it's in, in the process of extracting files now. So I can, this is the Pop! OS shop, we'll have a look at that in a moment. Uh, show applications, no, what do I want? Um, change background. Because one of the things that I really do quite like about Pop! OS is the artwork that comes with it. Specifically, specifically the Pop! OS actual artwork. So there's some Pop! OS stuff here. Are there any System76 backgrounds? I don't think I can see any. Wow, so they really haven't you know, done too much with the branding here. Um, Pop! OS, of course, is the, the branding of the operating system itself. Uh, Unleash Your Potential, I think, is like the company's slogan. or, or It's something that I've seen uh, put on quite a lot of um, media. And some of these uh, some of these space photos are quite nice, but I really like these these art this artwork down here, and it seems to be I, I haven't seen it on any other distribution. I don't know what that uh, artwork is licensed under or anything like that, but that just looks charming. I absolutely love it. Okay, so let's uh, go back here, and that's it. So there we go. It was just like install, install. That was a very quick process, wasn't it? So let's restart device. So one of the things that Pop! OS does differently to Ubuntu is that it actually lets you configure the system on first boot. I think Fedora did that last time I installed it as well. So it's interesting to see this put into play on an Ubuntu-based distribution. So let's, uh, let's open up. So we can do typing uh, English UK. Thank you very much. Uh, we want to turn off location services. Always turn off locations. I don't even like... I Rant for a different day. Okay. Okay, uh, full name. I usually just do VMs, just to. Uh, there we go. We're ready to go. Start using Pop OS. Brilliant. Okay, so we've now booted into our Pop OS GNOME desktop. Uh, just before we crack on, I would like to uh, change your background to something, something that they've drawn up. Um, that's really nice, isn't it? Oh, I quite like that one as well. I love the uh, the color in it as well. So, uh, but yeah, the rest of the uh, the settings here they're pretty standard GNOME settings. Quite easy to uh, to work through. Um, it doesn't come with the GNOME tweak tool, from what I can see, unless it's in utilities. But it doesn't appear it would be. No, and um, I haven't actually installed it on the Triton um, laptop. It just it did, there didn't seem to be anything that it was distinctively missing. Arguably, possibly the system tray icons up in the top right-hand corner there, um, but I don't use anything specifically that that fundamentally requires the, uh, the those icons there on the laptop. Uh, but I can certainly see some people uh, requiring that functionality now. The in, the uh, application that it come with, although it does seem off the uh, off the surface that it's reasonably light on applications, it does come with a full office suite. And it does come with a number of utilities here. It also comes with things like contacts, um, the weather app. Um, so there are a few things there. It's not. Um, it seems to be uh, a bit of a balance between the minimal install and the full install that you might get on Ubuntu. It's only things that maybe um, that maybe I don't know. I, I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, what uh, what compelled them to choose the software applications that they have? But it does seem to be quite a intuitive set. So. Um, so there's that. But really, the thing that's worth talking about is the Pop! OS uh, store here. 
And I really quite like it. It's every bit as user friendly as every uh, or most of the app stores about on, say, for example, Ubuntu or Ubuntu Mate. This is probably just as uh, I would say this is just as user friendly as as the uh, software boutique. Maybe um, not quite as uh, curated, but uh, still, pro well, I mean, it's still pretty curated uh, nevertheless. So it seems that Steam, for example, is quite easy to install out of the box. You got Slack. You got um, Telegram there. What's in games? So it does seem, and the, yeah, these, this is a pretty standard offering of Ubuntu games by the looks of it. Um, it does seem like there are quite a lot there. You can scroll down quite far. Um, oh, and there's Signal. So you've got the Signal app there. So that's quite a, quite a new app, if I remember correctly. Uh, so excellent. That's a really good software store. So really, I, I think that's just about it. I mean, the thing is with Pop! OS that there isn't really too much to show. It's got a fantastic installation process that was really quite quick. It comes with a basic set of decent components, comes with the GNOME desktop, and a very nice looking software store. Uh, it's definitely worth a look if you're looking for an alternative to the Ubuntu GNOME desktop experience. It seems that this is coming out every six months, so, and it seems to be pretty much um, being you know released at around the same time as the six monthly Ubuntu releases. So they're pretty much on top of their game, it seems. And I certainly haven't had any issues with stability. So um, so that's uh, that's just a bit of a brief look at Pop! OS 18.04, the LTS release. And um, I've got to say, you know, it's it certainly seems like it's succeeding at what it's setting out to do. So uh, pretty good. So that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.